On the show today, we sit down with former Ole Miss football coach Hugh Freeze to talk about his past and the good he hopes can come out of his personal failures. Lost the Liberty Lady Flames are in a battle for first place, and we bring you the top plays from the month of January. It all starts now. This is Game On. Friends and welcome to another brand new edition of Game On It. Your favorite host back again alongside Matt Warner. I'm Rhett McGibbon and we've got a great show for you today. Yeah, we sure do. We begin with some Liberty women's hoops. You know, they've been at or near the top of the Big South standings all season and they had a huge matchup this past Tuesday. And Rhett, I figured since you're, you know, the television voice Ooh. of the Lady Flames, you might be able to... Tell us a little bit more. I you want to bring this to us? That. Yeah. That was a very nice intro for me. And yeah, you're right. The Lady Flames and High Point entered this contest tied atop the conference standings. Two would enter, but only one would leave in first place. And if this had been a boxing match, yeah. the ref would have had to stop the fight early. Okay. What was supposed to be a battle to the wire between two of the conference's best ended up being a beat down in favor of Liberty. The Lady Flames would hold High Point to a season low 42 points wow. on 0 of 16 shooting from three point land. Meanwhile, Liberty was led by Kean Green, who turned in a just monster performance. 19 points, 14 rebounds. Nene Johnson would also chip in with 11 points off the bench, while Ashton Baker handed out seven assists. Liberty would cruise to a 65-42 win, the largest road win over high points since 2005. This victory is also memorable because it also marked the 700th victory in program history. Yeah, with that win, the Lady Flames now sit all by their lonesome atop the Big South with an 8-1 mark in the league. A great first half to the conference season for Kerry Green squad. Their only loss came at the hands of second place UNC Asheville and Liberty will get a chance to avenge that loss in Lynchburg on February 17th. Now as for the Liberty men, they took a five game losing streak into their matchup with Presbyterian and they would leave it there. The Flames put on an offensive clinic shooting just over 61% from the field, their highest mark since 2013. It would be both youth and experience leading the way offensively for Liberty, as fifth-year senior Ryan Kimwright poured in a season-high 21 points, while freshman Keegan McDowell had a career-best ball game with 19. A much-needed win for the Flames as they look to climb their way back into the Big South race. Well, let's head to the rink now where the Liberty hockey team remains scorching hot. Over the weekend, the Flames claimed the ESCHL regular season crown and extended their winning streak to an incredible 11 games. The most recent of those victories came at Delaware as the Flames swept the Blue Hens by the finals of 8-5 and 7-4. Delaware was last year's conference champ, but their reign is now over. With the conference crown now in hand, the Flames also earned the league's lone auto bid to the ACHA National Championships, which begin on March 8th. Well, staying with hockey, Flames goalie Josh Halpenny has lived through an athlete's worst fear, injury. And like everyone in that situation, he had a choice. He could sulk and isolate himself from the team, or he could find a way to still make a positive impact. Josh chose the latter, and it makes his return to the ice this year all the more sweet for both himself and his teammates. The green heart of the province. Chilliwack, British Columbia. A town just outside of Vancouver that is home to two things, pristine lakes and hockey players. This one you know, Josh Halpany. His journey to Liberty started over a decade ago. When I was about 10 years old, I was at a Hockey Ministries International camp and Jeff Botker, the assistant coach, he actually was out at the camp for doing some recruitment video for Liberty. So he did a little spiel on Liberty there and then actually gave out DVDs and brochures with Liberty, Liberty Hockey, that kind of stuff. You're kind of getting into the nitty gritty of life with the kids and so I could see why that would have, you know, possibly impacted him significantly. And I do remember handing out, you know, Liberty uh, DVDs, if you will, you know, talking about the school and Josh happened to be there. To have that then be something that came back around is pretty cool. Leaving Chilliwack for Lynchburg wouldn't be easy. The slower pace, pensive lifestyle of home would be something he would miss, but also need in the near future. There's a slower pace about Chilliwack than you get even in Lynchburg or obviously major cities. So it's a different atmosphere in that regard, and, which is something I enjoy. I love the slower pace, getting away from the high intensity of hockey and just relaxing. 
especially being able to get by myself out in the mountains and stuff and just kind of really reflect on stuff and just enjoy my own time. Unfortunately, he would get more alone time than he had ever dreamed. Injuries would begin to plague Josh early into his Liberty career. I had two surgeries in 2016. In February, I had a surgery on my hip, which was to repair my torn labrum, as well as shaving down the inside of the hip socket and the head of the femur, kind of reshaping it, smoothing everything out. It was about 11 months recovery. I was pretty much stuck laying in bed for about two months there with minimal times where I could get up and move around. And I was on crutches for all that time in a wheelchair for a little bit too. It was tough because that was actually the first injury that I'd had where I had to sit out any significant amount of time. For any athlete, I think it's a battle. It's, it's a mental grind because you're expecting to be there and to be on the ice and to be performing and be part of the team, if you will. And I kind of tried to focus more on how I could help others than really getting down and upset about where I was currently at. The things I noticed about Josh were, uh, one, obviously when he came to the games, he would wear these crazy suits, you know, and, and it would just, lighten guys up, right? And, and then on the other side, every time you're walking down um, after a game uh, through the back halls and into the locker room, you know, Josh is there, you know, just saying, hey, good job, giving fist pumps and that, and it takes a guy of character to be able to do that. I learned a lot during that time, and whether it's in hockey, if another guy is injured, just helping him through it mentally, just kind of like getting to look at the long term and not be so upset about short term not being able to play or other aspects of life. You never know, but I definitely do feel like it could help. And it has helped. Young Flames have taken steps forward this season, and Josh has provided leadership and quality goaltending from the back end that have propelled the Flames to a top 15 position in the nation. Even just watching them develop over the past year has been crazy to look at, at an individual scale and also as the group, how far they've progressed. So I can't wait to see how far they're gonna come in the next few years. I give him a lot of credit because a hip injury for a goaltender is the absolute worst. Yeah. All the rotating that you do and you do the butterfly, it all yeah. spreads out. So yeah. the fact that he was able to come back in such a short time frame from a severe injury is pretty huge. Like you always tell me, it's all in the hips. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think you earn a lot of respect from your teammates totally. and his situation, the fact that he was still so invested mm -hmm. and still so locked in with his team, even though he wasn't able to contribute on the ice. That's where you earn that respect from your totally. teammates mm -hmm. and so happy to see him having success this year on the ice yeah. for the Flames. Well, listen, if you're a frequent viewer of the show or you just follow Liberty Athletics, you know there seems to be a new facility like every other week around here. I'm exaggerating, but only just a bit. LU's $1 billion campus transformation project was on display yet again over the weekend as they held a grand opening for the new Liberty Natatorium. The 1,400-seat venue is being called one of the best collegiate swimming facilities in the nation, and a who's who from Liberty was there to help celebrate the opening. The LU swimming and diving team would celebrate in their own way by taking it to George Mason and VMI. The Lady Flames would defeat George Mason 261-87. They handed VMI a 290-44 defeat. Emily Manley's 400 IM highlighted the festivities as she turned in the fastest time in that event for a Liberty swimmer this season. The Lady Flames will now turn their sights toward the CCSA Championships, which will begin on February 14th in Athens, Georgia. Well, Liberty Baseball will take the field for their 2018 season opener on February 16th. It's fast approaching, and according to the Big South preseason poll, the expectations are pretty high for these Flames. Liberty has been picked to finish second in the conference behind only Winthrop. The Flames returned 14 players from a squad that went 32-23 and 23 a year ago. One of those players, DJ Artist, was named the conference preseason player of the year. Just one more accolade for Artist, who's already been named a preseason All-American. All in all, head coach Scott Jackson likes the trajectory of his program in year two on the job. I would say we're, we're right where we need to be. We have a bunch of young talent in our program. Um, uh, the first recruiting class that we had, um, you know, we, we just were thrilled to death with, not just the talent, but the type of kids that we have. And so, you know, the, their development and staying patient with them um, and, you know, helping them to progress in year one um, and put them in situations where they're going to be successful certainly bodes well for next year as we have a lot of returning players next year and, and put us in a position to where, you know, I think we can continue to move forward like we want to and, and hopefully get where we want to go. The expectations are also lofty for the Liberty softball team led by Dot Richardson. They too were predicted to finish in second place in the Big South, trailing only perennial power Longwood. In addition to the second place prediction, the Lady Flames also swept the preseason individual honors. 
as Amber Bishop was picked as Conference Preseason Player of the Year and Julia DiMartino Preseason Pitcher of the Year. It's the first time in program history that that has ever happened. The outside expectations may be high for this group, but Coach Dot believes this is the year her team takes it to that next level. We have the talent and the ability to compete, and this year to be able to not only compete but to win is something I'm pretty excited about seeing where we fall in that ranking. This is going to be a breakout year. I do believe last year was it the breakout year that really is going to take the program where you see it now, where we're recognized nationally. And I encourage everybody uh, to, to come out and be a part of Liberty Softball. Well, coming up, former Ole Miss football coach Hugh Free sits down with Game On to talk about his failures and the faith that has helped him and his family through some dark days. That plus warm, hot, and fuego. Game On coming right back. We the people. We are innovators. Dreamers. Leaders. Yeah, we feel pain. We get tired. But it won't stop us. God's call is our pursuit, and we will champion His name. I'm Marty Mischens. I'm a master firefighter with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I started out with residential coursework at Liberty back in 2000, and I've also been a member of the Coast Guard Reserve since then. I completed a substantial amount of my general education requirements, and then 9-11 happened. And after spending time on active duty, I never went back to school. Liberty Online gave me the opportunity to easily get a bachelor's degree that was equivalent to my field of work. That has actually opened up opportunities for promotional processes in the public safety realm and also in the military in the future. Liberty Online has been really flexible with my schedule, having a family and having a full-time career with the Lynchburg Fire Department. I'm currently enrolled in the Master of Arts in the Executive Leadership Program. Liberty Online worked great with me to be able to transition from completing a bachelor's and turning right back around and getting into a master's program, which is something that I never thought that I would even consider. Welcome back to the show. You know, Hugh Freeze is an incredible story. In the span of only eight years, he went from a high school football coach to the head coach at Ole Miss. And while in Oxford, he led them to more success they've had in recent years, a Sugar Bowl victory, a top 10 finish. He even beat Alabama twice. But all of that would unravel this past July. And now he finds himself on a road to redemption, one that focuses on his faith, his family, and hopefully in time, football. Liberty University recently welcomed former Ole Miss football coach Hugh Freeze to campus to speak to the student body at Convocation. It was the first public speaking appearance for Freeze since he was asked to resign from his coaching position last July in the wake of an investigation claiming he had made calls to escort services during his time at Ole Miss. I found myself on one side where I had to say to people that I love, I am sorry. Please forgive me. 
And today's really the first day that I can tell the Faith family, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Freeze, along with his wife Jill, addressed this tumultuous time in their lives in which their faith and marriage were tested. Coach Freeze then sat down for an interview with Game On. Well, Coach, first, thanks for sitting down with us. We do appreciate it. I guess as best you can for folks, walk me through the last seven, eight months for you, what this time has been like, but also where you feel like you've grown the most during what I'm sure has been one of the most difficult times or seasons of your life. It's been an incredibly difficult time. And while I um, don't celebrate the events that have caused the last seven or eight months, I actually have gotten to a place where I celebrate the results and yeah. the change that it's caused, uh, uh, you know, the, the intimacy between Jill and I now and the transparency and the communication is a, a level that we've really never experienced, even though we've, you know, been married 25 years. It's, um, and I think our kids see a, a difference that's going to model for them, whether it's the effectiveness of a prayer life that we do together, that we have time now, you yeah. know, I, I get up in the morning, I don't have a whole lot to do. So, um, but the, the, the process of, of going through a brokenness period that, that really brings you back to who do I really want to be and, um, and who really matters. Yeah. Um, because if you're not careful in this world, you, you listen to a lot of voices and things that really don't matter. And, and I was guilty of that. And, and now it's pretty clear to me who matters and, and who you can depend on. And um, now that I'm at a place of, uh, uh, of brokenness that uh, where I want to surrender each of my days and, and my career and whatever that looks like yeah. um, to, to honoring God and, and my family. You've always been very outspoken about your faith. And so you could almost understand how some people would say, well, at the same time, while he was being so outspoken, he was doing these other things kind of in secret. That faith must not be authentic. That must not be who he really is. How, have you, how do you try to answer th those critics? Or what do you point to to try to maybe set the record straight or, or show people that, no, this is faith is who I am? Yeah, I, I don't know that I'll ever be able to explain that uh, to, to people who don't understand why I choose to be a person of faith. I think anyone that is a person of faith understands very clearly, if you just go read Romans 7, when Paul says, man, the good that I wish I do, I do not do. And I could go into a lot of things that happened back in my early years that, you know, having gone through counseling and listen now, I can see how that, you know, formed uh, this box in your mind that, that some of this stuff is kind of a root from. But... Um, the, the bottom line, the root is self. And I, I waited too long to, to, to try to white knuckle through something and without being transparent and, and putting people around you that hold you to an accountable level and kind of help explain you know, what's really going on. You've said you want to get back into coaching again and possibly even this coming year after sitting out this past season. How do you feel like you'll be different as a coach now having gone through this? And do you feel like there will need to be safeguards or a new plan of attack just to kind of protect yourself from anything like this in the future? Yeah, well, I'd already done that. Yeah. I mean, again, people think this is um, something fairly new. I, I really started the plan of, of safeguards and accountability and uh, back in 2000, early 2016. And, um, you know, and this it will continue for sure because this is something I never want to go through again. But... I do have a strong desire to coach. Um, I don't think I will change a lot about coaching yeah. or our philosophy or it worked. Yeah. It was oh, yeah. it, it was uh, effective in reaching kids and their families and and uh, seeing impact that that last. You know, I've gotten hundreds of emails from my former players. You know, just reassuring me. You know, man, the the influence the program had on me, it works. So I don't know that I'm really gonna change a lot of those things. My issue was a, a, a personal issue that obviously needed changing and safeguarding and, and confession and repentance. Last thing, speaking to students like you did today, what kind of impact do you hope you can be? What type of example do you hope you can be for so many others? Well, the only thing I could come up with for um, this going public and, and is, is taking me to another level of brokenness and then to using uh, our story to impact others through it. Because look, 
people are struggling in this world. People of faith are struggling. People in marriages are struggling. And if Jill and I can say, look, this is the way God brought us through um, the issues we were going through, and we are stronger than ever, um, we're hopeful that, uh, that our story can, can impact others and, and they do the same. Our thanks to Coach Freeze for sitting down with us and uh, sharing some really personal things in his life. And certainly we hope for a happy ending to this road to redemption, not just for himself, but also for his family as well. Uh, time now for Warm, Hot, and Fuego. Now, if you hadn't noticed, Rhett's playing with the pain here. He's playing through <laughs> it. He's a gamer, a little yeah. under the weather Just today, bit, yeah. but he's a hockey guy. Yeah. He's tough. Okay. He shows up to work ready to go. So, Rhett, we appreciate yeah. you. Uh, save each and every word. Make, right. make the most out of it. Let's begin now with Warm. Who you got this week at Warm? Yeah, we got the swimming team here. Quite the senior weekend for them. Sure. Nine seniors moving on, but man, did they ever demolish VMI and George Mason like we talked about earlier. Against VMI, it was 290 to 44. Against GMU, it was 261 to 87. Three Lady Flames broke 57 seconds in the fly. So yeah. they came first, second, and third, led by Alicia Finnegan. So you have to think this group you know, they just, they've got the new facility and everything. Yeah. And in the past, they've been a, a team that's extremely competitive, but now you've got this place right in your backyard, oh, yeah. basically. The training's palace. gonna go up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it is a palace, really. Yeah. That's a great way of saying it. You have to think over the next couple of years, you're gonna see this team just uh, amazingly skyrocket yeah. when it comes to performance and just do so much, just do so well. Yeah. And I think not that they're doing poorly now, but you have to think, like I'm saying, with that facility, sure. they're just gonna be amazing. Sky's the limit. All right, from warm now, Who's your choice this week for hot? Hot, Key and Green, this young lady, just a dominant performance by her. 19 points, 14 boards, three games ago, it just seemed like the switch flipped. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And I, like I said, it seemed like she went from, all right, I'm having not so much the sophomore jinx here, but it seems like people are knowing how to guard me yeah. a little bit. And she's like, I'm the best Forget player. That. I'm, the, yeah. I'm the best. Like, I'm just gonna start taking over now. And ever since then, she's had, she had 30 points in one game. She's averaging a double-double. She's just dominating the interior. And I think right now, if I had to, if I could vote and yeah. I could place on her, she's the Big South Player of the Year because she's just been splendid. She has been awesome, yeah. and the team has been as well here. Uh, yeah. Really all of conference yeah, today, but especially totally. lately. All right, finally, in Fuego. You know, last week, I believe we had a newcomer who was named in Fuego, mm -hmm. and we have the very same this week, don't we? We do. We got a freshman here on yeah. the men's basketball team, Keegan McDowell, this guy. You know, a lot of hype coming into this one. We saw him at Wake Forest draining some sweet threes. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, kind, kind of went through a little bit of a valley there, yeah. which is okay, but he's, whenever you got a really solid player, you know that they're going to come out on the right side yeah. of things, and he's done that, and as of late, he's just, that sweet stroke is back, yeah, and he's just right. draining threes. His offensive prowess has just really been showing you. This is a guy, only a freshman, starting to get some starting yeah. minutes now, really excited about watching him develop over the next few seasons. Absolutely, and you see the confidence just skyrocketing yeah, totally. with each and every game. All right, yeah. great job as always. Well, still to come, they're the top five plays from the month of January. We call them the top five plays. No hidden agenda here. Yeah, that's Stick right. with us, it's coming up next. You're watching Game On. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. Each morning begins around seven. I make breakfast for the kids and get them ready for the day. Mornings can be hectic as I'm running my business from home and when the kids nap, it's the perfect time to work on my courses. By studying at Liberty University without set login times, I'm able to craft my own schedule around what works best for my life. This flexibility allows me to work on my assignments during the day so I can spend time with my husband after he gets home from work. As a parent, I have to balance the week from my daughter's dance class to teaching ballet to church activities. Studying online has allowed me to invest in my education while being a strong example to my children. My name is Kimberly. I'm a mom, a business owner, and a Liberty University student. We the champions. 
in order to affirm our tradition of unwavering faith, ignite a passion for wisdom, challenge perspectives, inspire creativity and pursue knowledge, do resolve to be the voice for the voiceless, bring healing to the hurting, fight for the oppressed, defend freedom, defy stereotypes, and follow God's calling wherever it may lead. Did you know, out of 2,100 colleges and universities, Liberty's online programs are ranked in the top 10 for quality, affordability, and accessibility? We've always been working hard to provide you with the best education possible. Enroll with us today. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Game On. Well, each month we do our very best to pick out the best plays yeah. and bring them to you in the Game On Top 5. Yeah, and we've done that for the month of January. So enough chit-chat. Why don't we get to those highlights, shall we? And we begin this month with a bit of an unusual one. This was at the grand opening of the Liberty Natatorium. Liberty President Jerry Falwell Jr. deciding to take a dip at a moment boy. before the meet <laughs> was to begin. He wanted to help break in the new high dive there. I was really hoping he'd try an arm stand reverse two somersault in the tough <laughs> position. He went for the old pencil there. I play better to play it safe. Yeah. You don't want to get do, be too risky on that first attempt. Maybe he'll keep kind of adding to it each year. I don't know. Either way, got a nice hand, and it made our top five plays, which, I mean, is quite the honor in and of yeah, itself. Very, very much so. Better man than me, I would not do that. Well, let's head to women's hoop. And the pride of Ankara, Turkey, That's Melis right. Uchar, with a pretty reverse lay-in. This came in the Lady Flames' huge win over a high point as Uchar provided a spark off the bench. Ankara, beautiful this time of year. We stay on the hardwood. This is the textbook pick and roll. Nice. The big fellow, Mile oh. Baxter Bell, throwing it down. He's a big baller, big Red. Baby. That's right. Great feed, great finish. But unfortunately, Liberty ended up dropping this ball game to UNC Ash. So that's all right. That's okay. Mile's playing well of late. That's He's right. giving them what they need. Back to the ladies, Bridget Redstat with a high degree of difficulty. Yeah, check this the spin out. move and then the shot off one foot. Don't try this at home. I attempted it in the office, got kind of dizzy, fell down, he then did. somehow got sick. But that's a highly skilled maneuver. You entered our con Bridget. game on concussion protocol, yes. I believe, after uh, after that little move. Yeah, I definitely did. Well, let, forget about that. Yeah. How about the number one yeah. play of the month? Yeah, let's talk yeah. about it. Spoiler alert does not involve anyone shirtless. Good. So just want to get that out there. We have a policy. We can only put one of those yeah. in the top five plays each month, and we hit our limit this month. All right, so instead, how about more hoops, huh? Flames at Radford. Liberty trailing Radford by three in the closing seconds when Georgie Pacheco Ortiz oh. rising to the occasion, as he so often does, drills the deep three to send the ball game to overtime. Big time playing the clutch from the Liberty point guard. And for the second time this season, senior big shot, as some are calling <laughs> him. Right. I think only me. Makes the big play uh, there since overtime. Earns top play. Second time this year, Georgie has yeah. earned the top play uh, for Liberty Athletics. He's so, got that clutch gene. He does. Yeah, he certainly sure. does. So do we, we like to think. <laughs> We'd love for you to watch more Game On. Hit us up, social media, at Game On LU. And also give us a little feedback, maybe what you thought of the top five. Yeah, check out our website as well, GameOnLU.com. For Rhett McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for watching this week. And we'll plan on seeing you right back here next time.